What is up YouTube? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 15 Ultimate Team Budget Series episode. And today guys, the position that we're going to be taking a look at is one of the most important positions in the game in my personal opinion, and that is cornerback. Now, of course, there are very many different types of cornerbacks out there. You've got your tall guys, you've got your strong guys, your tall guys, your fast guys, your smart guys, all that different type of thing. And we're going to be kind of taking a look at each of those different styles of cornerbacks. We'll find guys that have good zone coverage, guys that have good man coverage, and we'll kind of compare guys who are, in my opinion, a little bit overpriced to guys that I think are seriously underpriced. And that's really what the main idea is behind this entire series. We're trying to find guys that are the best value for cheap amount of coins and that's not necessarily to say that they're going to actually play better than the more expensive players in some cases they do but our goal here is really to find guys that are going to do the best job for the low amount of coins that some of us have still at this point in the game so with that being said, let's hop in and take a look at the first comparison that we have here. On the left-hand side of your screen, you are going to see a gold Jason Verrett, and he is 82 overall. And we're going to be comparing him to the elite team captain edition, Jonathan Joseph, who is 90 overall. And guys, again, what I'm not saying here is that the guy on the left-hand side is going to necessarily perform better than the guy on the right-hand side, but a lot of times what we need to do is try and find guys who are comparable to some of the better cards in terms of, you know, the attributes that they have, and we're going to try and get the best guys for the money. So, again, Jason Verrett on the left-hand side and Jonathan Joseph on the right-hand side. You can see their coins that they're going for under the actual card. So right now, Jason Verrett on average is going for about 7,500 coins, whereas Jonathan Joseph is going for more around 140,000 coins. So a huge difference there, almost a 20 times difference in terms of price. So that is definitely very, very significant. But to be honest with you, that's about the only thing that I look at and am very concerned about the difference between these two items because I actually think that they're very, very similar in most of the areas that we care about. So first of all, let's take a look at the categories that we do for each of these cornerback cards. So first we have speed, acceleration, jumping, strength, awareness, play recognition, catching, tackling, hit power, man coverage, zone coverage, and press. And obviously, just like it has been in every other version of this series, the yellow means that they're the same. Red means that the card that you're looking at is worse than the other one in that category. And then green means that it's better. So that hope that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. I'll try and figure out another way of doing it. But I think everybody kind of understands that at this point. So... First things first, speed, the exact same. Acceleration though, Jason Brett's actually a little bit faster. So he's gonna have 96 acceleration to the 92 acceleration of Jonathan Joseph. So in terms of pure speed, Jason Verrett is actually better. Now, where they make a big difference here between these two items is the awareness and the play recognition. And that's something that you're going to see being pretty consistent across the board here. Um, and I've noticed that that tends to be one of the areas that people uh, or that you're going to see that they upgrade here with when you're looking at a cheaper card versus a more expensive card. Typically, the more expensive card is going to have higher awareness and higher play recognition. And that's about the biggest thing that there's a difference in between these two items. Everything else, they're very, very similar. And if not, Jason Verrett being better. So like, for example, strength, Jason Verrett, eight better. Catching, he's eight better. Hit power, he's 25 better. And that's huge. I mean, you can't overlook that kind of thing. You know, but then you take a look at the awareness and of course he's 21 lower and the play recognition, he's 14 lower. So those two things are a little bit of a concern. But again, we're looking at items for this price range. And for this price range, there just aren't that many items that have, you know, higher awareness, higher play recognition than this. It's just the way that it is. That's just the way that the game is built. The gold cards tend to not have as of high of a number in awareness and play recognition. So that's just kind of be, going to be something that you're going to see as a continuing trend through this entire series, but especially at the cornerback position. But overall, though, if you look at their man coverage and zone coverage attributes, Jason Verrett is excellent in man coverage at 91 overall. His zone coverage leaves a little bit to be desired at only an 83, but it's not terrible. Jonathan Joseph is only one better in man coverage, and he's seven better in zone coverage, which, you know, of course is significant, but a lot of people still mostly play man coverage so it depends on the type of defense that you like to run 
Then when you look at the press, they're about the same. Uh, obviously, Jonathan Joseph has a 78 versus a 74. Uh, neither of those attributes is spectacular, but it's it's solid. It's decent enough to get by. So overall, guys, I think that the main difference, again, between these two items is the awareness and the play recognition. But Jason Verrett does also make up for it in terms of adding a couple points to acceleration and catching and hit power. So there's advantages to having Jason Verrett over Jonathan Joseph. Hopefully that helps you out guys a little bit with that first comparison. Now let's go in and take a look at the second comparison that we have here. And again, this is a cornerback that I think is very, very similar to the guy on the right. But you are going to see that Brandon Browner on your left hand side of your screen is significantly lower in certain areas. Now, one of those areas, of course, is when you take a look at the speed and the acceleration. He is three slower, and he does have one less for acceleration. I find those to be some of the most important attributes in this game. 85 speed for a cornerback, for me, is a little bit too slow. But that's just the style of defense that I play. I tend to leave my cornerbacks out on an island a lot more than other people do. If you're the kind of person, though, that tends to run a lot of zone coverage and you have help over the top, I actually think Brandon Browner is an excellent cornerback for you. He has 91 zone coverage, which is one better than Charles Tillman. And he also only has one lower in terms of man coverage at an 83. But where he makes his money, to be honest with you guys, is if you look at the fact that he's only a couple lower in almost all of these attributes. He's two lower in jumping, two lower in strength, four lower in awareness, three lower in play recognition. And the, really the only major difference between these two items is the fact that his tackling is significantly lower. He's 16 lower in tackling. So that sucks. I mean, we would hope that that would be a little bit higher. It's not, but... You know, you're not going to get everything for 4,000 coins, and that's what Brandon Browner's going for. When you compare him to Charles Tillman, which is going for about 35,000 coins, I mean, that's a huge difference in price. That's almost nine times as expensive for Charles Tillman as it is for Brandon Browner. And I don't think that there's nine times of a difference between Charles Tillman and Brandon Browner. I think that in a lot of these cases, you're paying for the fact that these are elite items on the right-hand side of your screen versus a gold item on the left-hand side of the screen. So you can get great value out of some of these items that are golds just because people would prefer to have elites and have that red item when you look at their roster. Don't fall for that though. You need to be the person that is thrifty. You need to be the person that has the best player for the price so that you can make upgrades at other areas of your team that are more significant. And I'm not saying that cornerback isn't significant. I definitely think it is. But if I can have Brandon Browner for 4,000 coins as opposed to Charles Tillman for 35,000 coins, I think I'm probably going to do that. I just think it's the right decision to make. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm actually probably going to be getting rid of my Charles Tillman here in the coming days, and I'll probably be tra trading him out for a Brandon Browner unless I can find somebody that I like better. Oh, and then one other thing that I also did want to mention on these items is the fact that Brandon Browner is one of the tallest cornerbacks that you are going to have in Madden 15. I think he might be the tallest cornerback in the game. I actually wasn't able to quickly scroll through and find anybody who's actually taller, but Brandon Browner is six foot four. So, I mean, that is an absolute monster. He can go up and defend against guys like Calvin Johnson and the big or the big wide receivers in the game, whereas a lot of these other guys can't do it. Even Charles Tillman at 6'2", who is a big cornerback, can't go up and jump with the likes of Calvin Johnson. That's the thing that I really love about Brandon Browner is that in a jump ball situation, there isn't anybody better. There really isn't. So hopefully that helps you out guys and hopefully you're able to save a few coins here by going with Brandon Browner as a guy who has great zone coverage. Next on the list, I think we have two guys here who are pretty similar in most attributes, but I'm actually going to go out on a crazy limb here and say that I would almost rather have the guy on the left than the guy on the right. And I know that sounds crazy, but I want you to take a look at these attributes. And on the left hand side of your screen, the item that you're going to be seeing is a gold Casey Hayward 82 overall. On the right hand side, you see Brent Grimes, who is an elite 88 overall. Now, the big difference between these that gives Brent Grimes an advantage is that he is three speed faster at an 88 versus an 85 speed for Casey Hayward. And just like the Brandon Browner in the last slide, I don't tend to like guys that have this slow of speed. The thing is, is that Casey Hayward's actually able to make up for it in other areas, and we'll get into that. But Take a look then at the jumping. 
Brent Grimes being a 96, that is something that is definitely significant. Casey Hayward is only an 85, which isn't a horrible number, but it's not great for a cornerback. We typically like to see that be around a 90, and then we wouldn't really be having this discussion, but there is definitely an advantage there for Brent Grimes over Casey Hayward. And then, of course, just like I mentioned with the previous uh, two slides, your awareness and your play recognition is definitely higher for the elite items than it is for the gold items. Brent Grimes, 14 higher in awareness, five higher for play recognition. Definitely something to take a look at. But again, we're talking about cheap items. There aren't a lot of gold cards that have high awareness at the cornerback position that are good in any other areas. So we kind of have to make, you, you kind of have to make sacrifices in certain areas. And that's the areas that I find to be okay, just because we are able to make up for them in other things, such as the man coverage, where Casey Hayward is actually a 91 and he has 94 zone coverage. So he's actually one higher than Grimes in man coverage and six higher in zone coverage those are the two most important attributes for cornerbacks in my personal opinion and he's higher in both of them definitely something to think about the other thing that this card has that not a lot of other cards do is that he is 80 catching that is a really high number for a cornerback he is not going to drop a lot of interceptions so if you're like me and you're somebody who struggles with your cornerbacks constantly dropping picks this might be somebody to look at. I really like this Casey Hayward item overall. Um, I know, like I mentioned, the speed is kind of a difference. I mean, it, it sucks at the fact that Casey Hayward's only an 85 speed, but the thing is, is that Brent Grimes being an 88 speed, I'm not super excited about having him being out there on, a, on an island himself. I mean, if, I, if he's up against somebody who's fast, he's gonna struggle in single man-to-man -man coverage. That's just the way that it is. But if you have Casey Hayward and he's only an 85 speed, that's not that much of a downgrade from the 88 speed. So that's why I'm okay with this. I think that these two items are similar in most areas. And like I said, I think that there are definitely advantages to having Casey Hayward over Brent Grimes. Now, the final comparison that we have at the cornerback position today is actually going to be a BCA item, and that's Prince Amukamura. He is 83 overall, and then you compare him to Champ Bailey, the elite 86 overall item, and I think there's a big, big difference between these items, and it's actually in favor of Prince Amukamura. And I know that's gonna sound crazy because you would not imagine an 83 overall item to match up favorably to an 86 overall item, and especially a gold to an elite, but that's where we're at. I think Prince Amukamara is probably a better overall cornerback than Champ Bailey. To be honest with you, the only area that Champ Bailey has a significant advantage is in the fact that he has higher awareness and higher play recognition. And granted, he is significantly higher in those areas. 17 higher in awareness and 19 higher in play recognition. He's going to make breaks on the ball that Prince of Mukamara is not typically going to make. And that's going to be a nice advantage of Champ Bailey. However, he is literally the same or lower overall in every other thing than those two things except for catching. He's too higher in catching. But other than that, Prince Mukamara is better at everything. He's three faster in speed with four higher acceleration, which is definitely going to help make up for the fact that he doesn't have as high overall of awareness. He's got four higher in jumping, 11 higher in strength. That is significant as well, guys. Strength is definitely something that helps you when you're looking at press. It helps the guys come off of blocks as well, which is nice. We definitely like to see that out of our cornerbacks that they can actually make plays on the run or even potentially break off of their receiver to make a tackle on another guy who gets open. And then he's also higher in man coverage at a 90, and they're the same at an 84 for zone. So overall, Prince Mukamara definitely has the advantage in most of these categories. Now, again, I understand the awareness and the play recognition are lower, but we can't necessarily just disregard the fact that he's higher in every other category. I mean, those things are significant. So that's why Prince of Mukamara is one of my absolute favorite budget cards in this game. He's my favorite budget card of this series because he's only going for 5,500 coins, whereas Champ Bailey going for 35,000 coins. So he's almost seven times more expensive than a Mukamara. That's just crazy to me. I don't see how people could justify that. But again, I think it comes down to the fact that people just like to see a, a, uh, an elite item on their team. So I hope that helps you guys out. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. 
If you learned something, please be sure to hit the like button below. That's how I help grow my channel. And I mean, it would really greatly help me if you guys do that on my videos. It, it does mean a lot to me. So I hope you're enjoying this series and I hope that we're able to give you some guys some great information, some great items that are going to be able to help you build your team so that you can compete against people that have higher overalls that are using stupid overpriced cards. So thank you guys again for watching. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you again and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.